Today, we're going to talk about preventing head injuries by using head protection. During this presentation, we'll cover why head protection is important, what construction employers and their employees need to consider when selecting head protection, and safe practices for using head protection. Let's start with why head protection is important. Head injuries are a serious issue for the construction industry. Each year, thousands of construction workers suffer head injuries. These injuries take a financial and human toll on the injured workers, their families, and their employers. They result in lost work days, productivity, and wages. To put it in perspective, this slide shows the number of non-fatal injuries per year between 2011 and 2018. On average, 6,977 construction workers suffered a reportable head injury each year. In 2018 alone, construction workers reported almost 8,000 head injuries, resulting in more than 23,000 lost work days. Head injuries can also be life-threatening. This slide shows the number of fatal head injuries among construction workers between 2011 and 2018. During this period, the number of fatal injuries averaged 215 per year. In 2018 alone, 230 construction workers died due to a head injury suffered on the job. On a construction site, there are many situations that can result in a head injury if a worker is not wearing proper head protection. Some common causes of head injuries include falling and coming in contact with an object or surface, such as equipment, a wall, or the ground, being struck by a fallen tool or material, being struck by a moving object, such as a material being moved by a crane, or as shown in this image, another worker moving a material or object, and coming in contact with overhead hazards, such as equipment or electrical wires. The latter can result in a worker being electrocuted. There are different types of head injuries. Some are more serious than others, and some, such as cuts, bruises, and burns, are more visible. If the impact is hard enough when the worker's head comes in contact with a surface, the impact can cause the brain to twist and bounce around in the skull. This type of injury causes a concussion. Concussions, which are also called traumatic brain injuries, can be mild to deadly, and the damage can vary depending on the part of the head where the impact occurs and how much force was behind the impact. The symptoms of a mild concussion tend to last a short period of time and the person returns to normal. A more severe concussion can cause long-term or permanent brain damage and even death. Types of traumatic brain injuries include a skull fracture, which may result in pieces of the skull or foreign materials injuring the brain, a contusion, which is when the brain is bruised and swollen brain tissue mixes with blood from broken blood vessels, an intracranial hematoma, which is damage to a major blood vessel in or around the brain that causes bleeding, and anoxia, which is an injury that reduces or stops the flow of oxygen to the brain. There are many signs of a brain injury, including dizziness, a worsening headache, ringing in the ears, nausea or vomiting, blurred vision, clear fluids draining from the nose or ears, convulsions or seizures, loss of consciousness, or unable to be woken up. It is important for workers and their employers to be aware of the signs of a concussion or a more serious brain injury. When a head injury occurs or an individual exhibits any of these symptoms, they should receive prompt medical care since brain injuries can be fatal. Risk for head injuries can be found in many locations on construction job sites. To protect workers from head injuries, OSHA requires employers to provide and employees to wear head protection. This is covered under the Code of Federal Regulations, 1926, Subpart E, Personal Protective and Life-Saving Equipment. The standard number is 29 CFR 1926.100. Since this requirement is critical, let's review what the standard says. 
Part A covers when employees must use head protection. The standard states, quote, employees working in areas where there is a possible danger of head injury from impact or from flying or falling objects or from electrical shocks and burns shall be protected by protective helmets, unquote. Part B1 covers what employers must provide. This section states that the employer must provide each employee with head protection that meets the specifications contained in any of the following consensus standards, American National Standards Institute, ANSI for short, Z89.1-2009, Z89.1-2003, and Z89.1-1997. Section B also states that, quote, the employer must ensure that the head protection provided for each employee exposed to high voltage electrical shocks and burns also meets the specifications contained in section 9.7, electrical insulation of any of the consensus standards identified in B1, unquote. And, quote, OSHA will deem any head protection device that the employer demonstrates is at least as effective as a head protection device constructed in accordance with one of the consensus standards identified in this standard to be in compliance, end quote. Employers can be fined for not complying with OSHA standards. The OSHA standards lays out the basic requirements, but it's up to the employer and the construction worker to select a head protection that will be the best for the work being performed. Hard hat is the common term used to refer to head protection that is most often seen on construction sites. Helmets or safety helmets refer to a newer type of head protection that has a chin strap and may have other safety features. Construction workers can use either type of head protection, hard hat or helmet, as long as the head protection meets OSHA requirements and the appropriate ANSI standard. It's important to note that bump caps provide minimal protection and do not comply with the OSHA requirements for head protection. Bump caps are made from lightweight plastic and are designed only to protect a person from bumping their head on protruding objects. They do not have a suspension system to protect a person from falling objects or electric shocks. In addition to selecting whether to use a hard hat or a helmet, there are other features that need to be considered to make sure the head protection is right for the job. First, it's important to consider what the risks for head injuries are and select the type of head protection that will be most protective. A type one hard hat or helmet protects against an impact from above, such as a falling tool. A type two hard hat or helmet protects against an impact from above and from the side, such as in the earlier image where the worker is struck on the side of the head by a piece of wood being carried by another worker. Next, it's important to select the right class of head protection. If there is no risk of an electrical hazard, then a class C hard hat or helmet, which does not protect against electrical hazards, could be used. If there is a risk of an electrical hazard of up to 2200 volts, a class G hard hat or helmet should be used. And if there is a risk of an electrical hazard up to 20,000 volts, a class E rated hard hat or helmet should be used. While head protection comes in different types, classes, and can be made of different materials, they should all have a shell made out of a rigid, yet bendable material that resists and deflects impacts and a suspension system that absorbs any remaining force after the shell deflects the impact. Once the head protection is selected, it's also important to make sure that it's used and maintained properly. The suspension inside the head protection is a critical feature. Head protection should not be worn with the suspension removed. The suspension should be adjusted so the head protection sits securely and comfortably on a worker's head. If it's too loose, it can fall off. The picture shows a hard hat with an adjustable suspension. 
Other protective equipment and accessories are important, but they should not interfere with the effectiveness of the head protection. For example, this slide shows a worker using hearing and eye protection designed for the head protection being used. Head protection should not be modified to accommodate the use of other PPE. Unless designed to be worn underneath the head protection, caps, hoods, and other headgear should not be worn because they can change the distribution of force after an impact. A winter liner for cold weather can be used if it is designed to be compatible with the head protection. Hard hats can be worn backwards if the manufacturer has tested and determined their hard hat meets the ANSI standard when worn backwards. In addition to wearing head protection properly, it should also be maintained. Proper maintenance includes inspecting the head protection before each use to make sure there is no damage to the shell or suspension, such as cracks, dents, tears, or other signs of damage. If the suspension is damaged, it should be replaced with one made by the same manufacturer and the same model. Using a suspension made for a different model or by a different manufacturer can reduce its effectiveness at absorbing the force of an impact. If the shell shows signs of damage or if it's been hit by a hard object, even if there's no visible damage, it should be replaced because it may be less effective. It's also important to keep in mind that exposure to extreme weather, prolonged heat or cold, or direct sunlight can also reduce the effectiveness of the head protection. As such, head protection should not be stored where it can be exposed to direct sunlight or heat, such as the back window of a truck or on a dashboard. Cleaning is an important part of maintaining head protection, since dirt, dust, grease, and other materials can build up and hide damage. Head protection should be cleaned periodically with mild soap and hot water. Solvents, gasoline, and other harsh chemicals should not be used because they can weaken the shell. The water used to clean tools should not be used to clean head protection. It is best to follow the manufacturer's recommendations for cleaning head protection. Even without damage, there are limits to how long you can use a piece of head protection. Typically, the shell lasts two to five years, and many manufacturers recommend replacing the suspension every 12 months. If the head protection is used frequently, it may need to be replaced more often. Manufacturers should include a manufactured date or an expiration date on each part. If the head protection is past the expiration date, it should be replaced. Construction workers often use stickers to personalize their head protection. The problem is that stickers can make it difficult to fully inspect the shell for damage and may even hide damage. This should be taken into consideration when inspecting head protection for damage. In addition, stickers can serve as a conduit for electricity reducing the head protection's electrical resistance. That's why it's important to follow each manufacturer's recommendations regarding sticker application. You can find additional information, the latest research, and edu educational materials that may be used with workers and contractors at this site, www.cpwr.com forward slash research forward slash preventing dash head dash injuries. That concludes our introduction to using head protection to prevent head injuries.